You're listening to The Startup with Monique LeRae, only on L.A. Talk Radio. Uh, how's it going, Los Angeles? It's The Startup with Monique LeRae, and I'm Monique LeRae. Thank you so much for tuning in on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. I finally got my backdrop, you guys. Oh, what do you think? Maybe I'll start wearing some purples and some golds to go with and some orange to go with the colors. But yes, finally got it. And we're starting to shape up here. Um, so thank you so much for tuning in. We are back with um, my fabulous winemaker uh, guest, Leah Solberg. I'll bring her on in just a moment. I want to give you a recap on what's going on and uh, give you an update on the pandemic film. The second um, installation to the pandemic project documentary, the award winning American documentary trailer that we have out there. Um, and it's set to go to the film festivals starting this late summer. I'm really excited to make those announcements. Once we submit, we'll be making announcements, but so far the trailers picked up a lot of traction and we've got five total nominations so far and one win. So we're so excited for that. Thank you, shout out to everyone that's helped make that possible. And so now we're on our way to our last trip for the pandemic film, the international version. And, you know, the station owner, Sam, was asking me behind the scenes, you know, a little bit about like in depth, like what do I do when I go to these countries, which I love that he asked me that. And people see me posting in other places and think it's just this vacation I'm on. And it really isn't, guys. It is totally opposite from a vacation. Although I'm blessed to be able to go to these places, it's really hard work fundraising, um, getting into the countries, <laughs> getting the interviews, um, all the COVID tests that I have to do. Um, it got to the point recently with my passport that um, they took my passport and I won't tell you what country because you'll have to watch the film. Um, but, you know, they took my pa passport and walked off. And I remember thinking all my phones are dead. What's going to happen? Like if I'm pulled to the side and I need to call my lawyer or something, but you know, there was nothing wrong. I mean, I just uh, comply to all the searches and answer all the questions and send them to my website. You know, there's, um, you know, a blueprint of what I've been doing for the last two and a half years. So it's all out there and they can easily look me up. But um, I'll, I'll save the story from when I came back from the Middle East going through uh, immigration. That was interesting. Um, coming back home, actually. But uh, anyway, I wanted to let you guys know we're on our last final leg of the trip for the film. So uh, I leave in two weeks um, to Iceland. Well, I'll go to the East Coast first, shoot up to Iceland, um, then shoot down to Ibiza, Spain, even though we've already covered Spain. Ibiza is a connection for me to Casablanca, Morocco. And then from Morocco, uh, Ghana, you know, Accra, Ghana, and then down to uh, Johannesburg, South Africa. Now, those are the plans, but things change, guys, on the road. So hopefully um, I'll be able to get into all those countries and, and, and talk to some people and some business owners and round out this film. And then it's, I'm home for the summer. We have a lot of events and things that we're doing in the wine field and the wine business. And speaking of, I have Leah Solberg, my, one of my dearest friends and winemaker here with us. So let's bring Leah up. She's back, Hi. guys. Hi. Hi. Live and in, in sort of the studio. Uh, a little bit, <laughs> yeah, a, a little bit better than last time when we were like, oh, I'm outside and inside and trying yes. just to get good reception. So, um, you know, well, yeah. it's, it's been fun uh, navigating these last couple of years, you know, uh, with covid and stuff and in trying to do these kind of um formats and platforms and and yeah. how to get that done so thanks for having me again by well, the way <laughs> happy welcome. Sunday. yes well happy sunday yeah you know our, people who watch my shows um know that we do shows in the car so i mean for the better part <laughs> of 2020 uh or 2019 and 2020 i was in my car at a Starbucks around the corner from my house because that Wi-Fi was so strong. And I would always just go there, park my car, do my show, because I knew their, their Wi-Fi was stronger than mine. I was up in the hills and my Wi-Fi was not the best. And it just was what it was, you know? And this is called the startup and you make it work. I mean, I think that we have to just take our hats off to entrepreneurs that they're in the field these days, multitasking, not checking into an office necessarily, raising children and making it happen. You know, and I think we saw that with you last week or two weeks ago it was, right? Right, right. And, you know, it's, it's 
you know, being an entrepreneur is um, really, you know, it's hard work, but it's also so rewarding. <laughs> and, um, you know, just on that note, I, I was a part of something. Yesterday was National Armed Forces Day. I don't know if everybody's aware. Um, and yeah, I was I a part. It. Yeah. <laughs> and I was a part of a, a, a fundraiser gala. Um, it was, it's called Northwest Battle Buddies, you know, and it's just like, um, just, just being able to be an entrepreneur in this country, you know, and having our freedoms. And I mean, just my hats off to all of our soldiers and veterans and people that, you know, get behind, um, you know, be, fighting for our freedom in this country. I just, I don't think that, um, we could ever thank them enough because I certainly wouldn't want to do it. And, uh, you know, it's unfortunately a necessary thing still in our society at this point, you know, yeah. hopefully fingers crossed, you know, in the future, there won't be a need for military and, and war and, and all of these things. Um, but right yeah. now it's, it's a necessary thing. And um, yeah, so I was lucky enough to be a part of such a great event last night and it's called Northwest Battle Buddies. And if anybody's looking to get behind a great charity to support, this is it. I mean, if you like dogs and puppies, oh my gosh. <laughs> we love dogs and puppies. I mean, hello. Puppies everywhere. <laughs> I had puppy fever. So yes. um, what they do is they go in and they um, take uh, dogs from either rescue shelters or um, donations. And, and they, they do six months of training with these dogs for veterans that come back from the war. And like one in three veterans, I didn't know all of this until last night, suffer from PTSD. And I don't know if people know what PTSD, a, a quick um, mm -hmm. uh, definition is an anxiety disorder um, that you oftentimes will get after a traumatic event. And it causes you to live and horrible fear and anxiety and oppression and it's hard to even function and it's like our our soldiers have gone out there and done these things for our freedom and then come back and then they're suffering like this and yeah. we just put them on medication and hope it goes away and it's like this is such a great thing that they're doing with these dogs not only giving the dogs purpose you know and oh. and you know like a, a job and they they thrive at and they do such a great job but these families you know that kind of are relying like i heard this over and over again throughout you know the evening you know they relied more on their families um to get them through their moments of like i need support and so yeah. their families lives are being you know, affected as well. And, um, having these animals there just to like unconditional love and, you know, wow. they're supporting each other. It was just, it was so amazing. And I have to give a special shout out. Cause I think like the, the, like cherry on top was the Cowlitz indigenous, um, community last night. They donated $300,000 to Whoa. this uh, yes three hundred thousand dollars shout out oh my gosh i mean uh uh the um her name is uh patty kins kinswa gazer I'm, I'm sorry if i butchered that um she is a general <laughs> council vice chair member of the cowlitz uh indigenous tribe in washington state and wow. they they not only donated $150,000 last year, but $300,000 last night. I, I was like, oh, my gosh. You know, like. Huh. That's so great. Oh, That's and, so and, great. Right. And these are tax write-offs, you know? So if right. you're making a certain amount of money in donations or just in, in, in generating uh, some income for your organization, you can donate to things like this, and it can be an exemption for you. Right. Absolutely. And, I mean, um, I, like – the statistics for these uh, veterans that receive these dogs is like, I think it's a hundred percent. Like they're, wow. you know, from going to, from being in the darkest place, like having uh, an, an out plan, you know, like I'm done, you know, I, I have an exit plan. I mean, like every single one of these people. And I think they've done almost like 200 dogs at this point last night 26 veterans there's 75 on the waiting list right now 26 got taken off it was just like that's this 26. is great right i mean it was just such a magical night to be a part of and so yeah you know we've been doing you're a lot of charity from this 
Right. So, not only are you a, a fabulous mom and partner <laughs> to your partner and winemaker and traveler, you're also philanthropic and you love the animals. And yeah, shout out to the to the veterans. My grandpa was a merchant marine um, and he was old school, you know, real old school. Right. He's been right. he was in three, three different wars and he um you know, you're right. They don't get enough recognition. And I think when you travel and you really see how good we have it, even though this was the week from hell for a lot of people. I mean, right. everything that uh, there was so many, so much bad news this week, you know, and, and as entrepreneurs, you know, we have to swim these waters and figure it out. But we can't do that without a safe place to be. And so I think it's very I think it's very honorable. And, and I thank you for reminding us to say thank you to, for keeping us safe. Um, I, you and I have had deep conversations about war and peace and, you know, love and happiness, if not to be corny, but we've talked right. about all these things and we're on the same page when it comes to it, you know, and I was in Europe when Russia invaded Ukraine and I felt that tension and energy and, and I feel it now. And, um, okay. Something. <laughs> <laughs> you got a real like. Right. <laughs> Hello. I'm not moving it. And that's kind of scary. Why don't we go full frame and have Leah introduce herself for the people who don't know her and I'll be right back. So All right. <laughs> well, hi there, everyone. Um, I am Leah Solberg from Michael Solberg Family Wines. Um, we're a second generation uh, winery. We hail from Napa County now. Um, we originally started in Healdsburg, California. And that's about an hour's out of Napa. Um, and my my father, Michael Solberg, um, started in the 80s. And uh, after he passed away in 2011, I uh, took on uh, the, the the job of filling his very big shoes and uh, continuing the family legacy of creating fabulous wines at everyday prices. And it's just an honor to be able to do what I love and, um, and, and, and carry on that legacy, not only for my father, but for my family into the future. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with our wines, but there's the label. Oh, let's see Ooh. if I can turn it. All right. There's our Merlot. Um, we've got a Cabernet Sauvignon, Chardonnay. We're okay. expanding into, uh, Rosé. I also make, um, Capa Kenya wines. Yes. Couple Leah, Leah Von Dahl. Uh, if you're not familiar, go look that up online. It's a fun little wine we're doing. We've got a Chardonnay, a Cabernet, and our newly released uh, rose. Look at that label. So, I love this label. It's so pretty. Yes. It's so feminine. It's just, you know, it's a lot of fun. We did send yes. out some fun packaging. I didn't get that. one of those yet. Where's mine? I know. I know. We got to get you one. Uh, wow look at that yeah. and and this That's this awesome. is this is the the icing on the cake <laughs> it's the, the wine stop that's amazing <laughs> yeah that's amazing I know is not very much though to be honest I love that. <laughs> i'm you not know, a quitter my, <laughs> my signature winner will be the bulldog um <laughs> me and i are working on a wine caterers uh limited edition wine coming soon and she and I have talked about it we're going to work but on the top of my wine bottles will be this fabulous thing because if love you, know, me, you know I love bulldogs so <laughs> congratulations on all of this because you guys we touched on it on when we were kind of doing uh Leah's interview she was kind of on man on the street you know mm -hmm. kind of rugged interview that we had a couple weeks ago but we had a really, we started a really great conversation and this I, I'm calling it my summer of wine. You and I offline spoke about it. Like I'm going to sit still from July to September locally. I mean, I might go to Vegas once, but I'm saying <laughs> I'm not getting on any planes. I'm staying here. I'm giving myself a proper eight week grown up summer, right? I'm going to go do things around LA I've never done, you know, being born and raised here because I've always been working and running around. So with that summer of wine is going to be, you guys are going to see a lot more posts on at the wine caters at Michael Silver family wines. There's going to be more um, wine placement in the area and just going to engulf myself in this brand that Lee and I have been working on for so many years. And I got sidetracked with the pandemic and other horror stories. So, you know, right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, girl, what is going on? 
do you think that people are going to drink more wine, even though we're having a glass shortage? What's what's your prognosis for this summer well, of wine that we're going to do? You know, I was looking at that. Um, millennials are the fastest growing um, uh, market in wine drinking. So that's they're not the biggest, but they're they are the fastest growing. That said, um, I do think that wine is going to become more and more. Um, a staple for them as they get a little bit older. You know, I think a lot of people right now are into sparkling or seltzers, um, you know, not to be named, <laughs> but <laughs> the pain they're of my existence. Paying, they're not paying for sponsorship here yet. Right, yet. right, right. <laughs> um, but uh, no, you know, uh, and I get the draw behind the seltzers and, and the sparkling. It's, you know, refreshing, especially during, you know, the hot months. Um, I, you know, I think that maybe the wine um, world needs to get a little bit more creative in how it's bringing the wines to the millennial market, maybe even yeah. uh, platforms where we're creating cocktails with wine, but are a little more vivacious, have some bubbles in there, uh, maybe yeah. some fruit, you know what I mean? So um, yeah. they're, they're, these are all things that I think about and mulling them around in my mind, because, uh, you know, like a lot of the southern um, states, Kansas, for example, um, they're kind of slowly getting up their speed in the the, the wine market and their you know their their love of wine. I'm not saying they don't love it, but it's not maybe their first go to. You know, maybe more of a a whiskey or something like that. Uh, yeah. But we're yeah. working on it. We're working on it. You're you know, working. you're right. I think it, it, the word vivacious is right on brand. TikTok right. S, shout out to TikTok, holler at us. We'd right. love to collect. <laughs> Leah dominates on that space. I need to get <laughs> my ass in gear over there. Uh, but you know, it's it's true. Vivaciousness, bubbles, fun packaging, refreshing. Mm. Those are things that the wine we have to get a little bit more um gnarly. I'm just gonna use that. I like that word. We're gonna get a little more gnarly with our packaging and our branding. And I think as we peel the layers back with this pandemic and the this uh, supply, you know, the supply and demand pick up, and the shipping issues are are hopefully navigated quickly. Yeah, um, you know, speaking of yes. this, class, <laughs> yeah, listen, I just I just don't drive. I just I'm not doing it. But you know, speaking of, we we touched on it last time, and it just it keeps coming up for me. I really think that we need to get on. I'm not going to give this brand any shout out until I get a um, sponsorship. But um, this this particular aluminum this this level of like i like the way this looks leah when will we see i'm putting you on the spot when will we see a solberg <laughs> uh manifestation in this in this way do you think um you know uh, i think as um things pivot more and more and the need for um different packaging becomes more relevant which i believe it will be um either that or we're gonna have to go back into uh u.s made bottles <laughs> and, 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 you know, in-house stuff, um, more locally, we're not like, you know, going overseas to have that brought to us. We're actually doing it here in the U S that would be nice. Um, yeah. and that's not across the board. That's just like 90% of the market. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, I, I think it was just a, as it develops, um, and as it makes sense, um, you know, we talked about the, uh, like the Capri Sun juice, kind of packaging for wines. Have, um, have to do that. Let's test that out. Let's go. Right, right. It's all <laughs> about, you know, getting the um, the manufacturing tools in there uh, for it to be put, you know, right now we're set up for glass. We're not set up for that particular packaging. Um, another thing that I think the new, new drinkers and uh, people coming up through the ranks um, are in, interested in, and, and even older um, generations that have been drinking wine for, you know, a couple decades or more, um, yeah. <laughs> they're looking for a, a lower alcohol. I mean, it used to be a thing, you know, 13.9. It still is. I mean, that yeah. red wine's 13.9, white's 13.5. But um, I think that going forward, more and more people are looking to be more healthful, spiritually, mentally, um, physically. Uh, and yeah. so they're going to look for a lower alcohol um, 
a substitute, you know, and I think the wine industry is, is great for that. I mean, we can adjust and wine is still good for you. I mean, it, it still is. Right. The reverse it, control does wonders for my skin, everybody. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is alcohol. So and that's the other part of it. Not if you want want to drink alcohol, not everybody wants to have that high of percentage. Like, and even if you're like having like, let's say a glass of wine a day, it, it gets to a point where people are like, oh, is this healthy for me? And with the lower alcohol wines, I think that will make, you know, a huge difference for a lot of um, wine drinkers. So that's something that I'm very interested in myself. So, well, I'm glad we're addressing it here because, you know, this is the startup and we want to put ideas out there. And also for our listeners and viewers, if there are people who are interested in partnering with myself, with the wine caterers and Leah with Michael Solberg Family Wines and getting these Capri packs out, shout out to Capri. We're not going <laughs> yeah, to right. mess with, we'll get our own trademark. But if you if you are interested in getting the wine business and you have some capital and you want to partner with us, you know, we're o- I think I can speak for Leah. We're open to that because what would the infrastructure for the manufacturing piece look like dollar wise give us a scale of like what oh you know probably tens of thousands, thousand frame yeah, or tens of thousands at least <laughs> you know okay are no, we maybe. at like 50,000 to about a hundred thousand yeah, yeah we should be able to get it done for about that no problem <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, we gotta the well, you know, <laughs> you can always bring in. They actually do, and I'm I'm gonna throw this out there. They do have um, mobile bottling units, and I have used these in the past for um, a keg wines. I used to do um, uh, recyclable keg wines. I'm not doing them currently, so I have worked with other packaging. Um, so that is an option for people out there if they're looking to do something a little bit more creative and don't want to bring in a huge um whole equipment process yeah. into their you know yeah. facility they can start out by getting their feet wet and that might be a good idea for us monique is doing a yeah. mobile bottling um kind of situation so i think that we're good we're thinking out loud here i want in on that because guess what we're smack dab in the middle of wedding season i live in laguna beach this is a prime place for weddings everywhere i turn there's a proposal or a wedding and shout out to love because we need more of it but right. it's true everybody wants to get creative and do the next hot thing and these mobile um setups would be great and it would answer the supply chain issue that we're having with the glass and all the other things um so anybody out there that wants to get in the wine business, we're open in to opening that piece up and partnering with people, right? I mean, I think that it would be fun. Yeah, so. yeah. Gosh, I'm always, I mean, I'm always open to things. I'm always here to listen. And I'm I'm not one of those people that automatically is just like, no, that's not going to work. I like to at least hear the idea. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, <laughs> if it makes sense. <laughs> Well, you know, even those little balls, like, remember those little, like, um, keg ball, not keg balls, like, bomb, like, I think yeah. they sell them on, oh, on yeah. the airline. You know what I mean? Those little drink balls. We could do, what? like, a wine, like, a splash. Yeah, you I know that yeah. one of those companies is, like, women-owned, or woman-owned, or women-owned, <laughs> right. Uh, I I'm, I can't remember the name of it, but it's, it's like, a little wine cocktail in a ball. And I, I guess they're killing the market. <laughs> Like, Listen, they're do- you got to get creative because I think, like you said, if we're going to stay vivacious in the wine business, we have to look vivacious. We have to feel vivacious. And right. then you're, you've already got the influencer piece on TikTok down. So all we need to do is marry that <laughs> with the vivacious product and packaging. And we're, we're in the game, right? There we go. There we go. <laughs> all right. Well, give everybody your handle. Where can people find you and where they can they order? Because, you know, we're going to be at the L.A. Wine Fest on June 4th for one day of the two days at the Queen Mary. We're going to be there with the Solberg right, wine, right, Papa right. wine, pouring it up. So you guys have to come and get a ticket and see me because I'll be there. But where can people order it if they want, if they fall in love with it and they, and they need to get some more? Um, you can always go to Michael Solberg Family Wines. It's um, right below my face. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah. if you can't see me because you're driving and you're just listening, Michael Solberg, S-U-L-L-B-E-R-G, Family Wines. Um, we should pop right up. Um, you can contact us on our website. You can contact us through Instagram, Facebook, um, TikTok, uh, Twitter, any of those. Michael Solberg Family Wines uh, should get you there. 
Nice, nice. And um, guys, listen, if you are a brand, a startup brand, we're looking for all types of things. We're looking for energy. I'm always looking for energy. Even though people say I have too much, it's it's really not true. It's it's a fight. I'm drinking coffee today to pull myself through it today. I don't know well, why. Well, here, but, cheers. <laughs> oh, cheers, darling. <laughs> we're talking about why we're drinking coffee. Uh, but yeah, if you have energy, if you have organic, if you have candles, if you have um, skin care, hair care, anything, we're looking for brands of all types. And we're doing a gifting suite celebrating the NTV, uh, t movie and TV awards this June 2nd. So we'll be in Hollywood. Leah will be with me pouring up some wine, Woo! some sober, and some capo. We're so excited that she's going to actually be there. And you know what? I got my pens here, Leah, so you can sign some bottles for people. So oh. we would love to have you do that. I brought two. I got white and gold. So there you go. Awesome. I'll make so, it happen. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you so much. I want to bra brag on you a little bit. Uh, she donated a bunch, a, a bunch of cases of wine to the Cam for a Cause charity this last week. And a vacation package, along with her autographed limited edition wine, Went for forty five hundred dollars to benefit that charity Yay! last week. So, good job, Yay! Leah. Thank you so much. You added so much value, and it's to help epilepsy research and in honor of Cameron uh, Boyce, the D Disney uh, star, and above all, just a amazing person. I got to meet his family and his friends, and wow, the love in that room. You could, it almost felt like he was there, and you know, it was just a it was a good look. And thank you so much for for doing that. I think it's going to help a lot of people. That's, you know, I mean, I wish, you know, bittersweetly, I wish he was still here with all of us. Um, but just to be able to support and pay it forward, that's, you know, hopefully what it's about for a lot of people. It definitely is that. That's, that's what it's about for me. So, you know, I leave that. this place I better that. than I found it. <laughs> Leave it better than you found it, and it gives everybody a really good glass that can pair. Wine that can pair well with the glass is, is the slogan sometimes. And um, all right, well, um, Leah, thank you so much for being here, and I will see you in about two weeks' time, darling. You'll be down I will here. see you then. Oh, finally, the I'm going to hug you. <laughs> When's the last time I saw you in person? Was it before the pandemic? No, it might have been. I don't know. It's been a minute. It hasn't been two years, has it? I feel like I was up there to see you. I know. I feel like we saw some. Uh, it might have been California. Oh, my God. Badass. Right. Badass. I'll give you a big old hug, darling. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I can't wait. All right. Love much you. love. Thank Take you care, care. All Bye. right, Leah. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I want to give you my handles, too, if you haven't followed me on Instagram yet, at the startup with Monique Loray. Um, at Monique Luray um, Stinson on Instagram, and it's uh, spelled right there. <laughs> um, and then also, if you guys want to follow me on my media page where you can see all the events and placements and things, at Cap Aquarius Media, that's C A P Aquarius Media at gmail.com. And we will be next week, we're going to have a guest. We'll be here in studio, the home studio, and it'll be a good time. I think June 5th, there'll be a replay because I'll be in New York um, on my way to uh, the, the final leg of this pandemic film trip. So um, thank you for tuning in. Again, if you have any pandemic stories in those areas in Iceland, Ibiza, Spain, Casablanca, Morocco, Accra, Ghana, or Johannesburg, South Africa, you can email me at capaquariusmedia at gmail.com or you can DM, DM me. Um, at Monique Loray Stinson or at Cap Aquarius Media. And we would love to hear those stories. And we're looking for specifically entrepreneurs, survivors. Um, we're leaving all the politics to the politicians on this one and just focusing on the human interests and um, humanitarian stories, you know, in this historical time. So that's what the film is. And you haven't seen the trailer, guys. Go on YouTube and type in four words, The Pandemic Project Documentary. And give us a like. We would love to hear your feedback on the tra the award winning trailer, um, and that's about it. So listen, all the crazy news uh, this week that we've heard, everything feels like it's coming from every direction, and I know how hard it can be. Please stay focused on the good that we have and all the blessings we have, and please stay focused on your brands. Okay, we need them in in the world. So just do one good thing every day for yourself could do one good thing for your brand every day and just keep focused because believe me, I've been through it all and um, here we are still. So 
What will you start up today? I look forward to see you guys next weekend. Be good to one another and like this video, okay? All right, see you guys next weekend at four o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Be well. Bye. You're listening to The Startup with Monique LeRae, only on LA Talk Radio.